<clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Zara from Global AI Hub and this is our second webinar from our series of webinars. This webinar will be about COVID-19 and the problems with data and AI. Joining us today is Ricardo Casserini, who is a data journalist at DataPy. So let's welcome Ricardo. Everybody, thank you for the opportunity. Hi, Ricardo. It's a great pleasure to have you here. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And you? It's OK. I'm good. So tell us something about yourself and what you'll be talking about today a little oh, later. Well, uh, OK, as you said, I'm I am a data journalist in, with my personal blog, uh, DataPy. Um, mm -hmm. I've also been a didactic um, assistant in a, in a company about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, mm -hmm. where I created a, a lot of uh, projects for uh, children about um, sustainable mobility and uh, saving energy at school. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, um, during the last uh, few months, I've also been very interested about COVID-19 and um, all the topics uh, about um, uh, artificial intelligence that could uh, mm -hmm. help us in this emergency. So I would like to talk about uh, ethic problem and limits about uh, all this uh, kind of stuff. So, All right, then. Stage is yours. I'm going to leave. Hope you have a good time. OK, thank you. So um, um, in technological speak, speaking i think we are okay it's a bit controversial but uh, we are lucky that this happened in uh, 2020 in 2000, 2020 and not uh, 50 years ago or uh, 10 years ago uh, because uh, of course we right now we have many tools that could uh, really help us uh, to to for example share information with um, with other people all around the world about this uh, epidemic. We have computer, that uh, supercomputer that could help us to, to find uh, new drugs to, to fight this uh, coronavirus. We have also data in, mm, data, mm, a lot of data, artificial intelligence that uh, really help us or in finding and track this disease. And uh, of course, all these tools that we never had during the Spanish flu. So basically, we are in uh, the first epidemic in the high era. It's not a great award, but uh, it's what, what we have right now. So let's start this uh, this journey with uh, one of my favorite examples about uh, predictive algorithm, algorithms that uh, has been used uh, uh, during the last, uh, last month. It's about... Uh, uh, Blue Dot, I don't know if you heard about this uh, Canadian company, uh, an artificial intelligence company that discovered in advance uh, a, new, a cluster of uh, unusual pneumonia in, um, in Hubei that, um, in, in, uh, that uh, usual, unusual pneumonia is uh, our SARS-CoV-2 that uh, causes uh, COVID-19. So basically, this uh, Canadian um, artificial intelligence um, and this powerful algorithm based with machine learning uh, technology uh, that uh, grab information from blog, newspaper, airline tickets, uh, hotel, and um, it's been really, really um, helpful for us to, to, to send a warning to, to the hospital. And uh, it, it warned us even before uh, the World Health Organization, even uh, 10 days before. And uh, it, it also worked very well during uh, 2013 with uh, the Zika virus uh, spreading. It was even better than uh, Google flu trend because uh, Google flu trend underestimated the, the spreading of Zika virus. But uh, I think Blue Dot is one one in a million uh, company. Uh, I've done it, it has done a great job, but uh, we still need a lot of data to understand this uh, this this disease. We we had an historical data about previous uh, epidemics 
and uh, to, to feed our artificial intelligence and understand how this uh, this new epidemics moves all around the world. So we need to more data to improve uh, algorithm accuracy. And uh, by the way, it's, it's all, I think it's all up on us about uh, understanding how this uh, is moving because um, Blue Dot send, send, that, uh, send us a, a warning but uh, it, it, coronavirus caught cal us totally unprepared. So, and people creating uh, a lot of either hyping about uh, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, intelligence in my way, in my um, opinion, sorry, because uh, um, during an emergency, people are asking for desperate, sometimes desperate solution but we have to be really careful because uh, unproven technology could could be could harm us. So, and artificial intelligence as a tool could be also a benefit, a huge benefit, I think. But also can have uh, a lot of problem like accuracy, biases problem, and uh, what uh, scare me the most uh, could uh, exas exacerbating surveillance system that uh, is right now all around us. So um, basically talking about uh, medical stuff, uh, I am really fascinating about uh, diagnosis, uh, medical system um, that uh, are being using during this uh, emergency. So, so thing, but uh, what scares me the most is about false positive about this diagnostic uh, system. What could happen if we send at home or through the street uh, people that seem healthy, but they are not? Uh, I think this could be a huge mistake. Uh, we need to be really, really careful. And um, using eye help in this uh, field could be really tricky if we use, uh, use that alone. So um, there is also this, uh, example that I really like to, I would like to, to talk about is uh, Alibaba, the thanks really to Alibaba that sent us uh, in Europe uh, um, a free artificial intelligence for computing to tomography to diagnose uh, COVID-19 in uh, people's lungs. And uh, they send us for free, but uh, I think there is some issue that uh, we need to talk, for example, uh, Alibaba claims that uh, this is this system it's uh, ba based on a uh, machine learning algorithm is really uh, as a, a high accuracy around 96 percent it's really fast but uh, I think that 96 uh, percent is a good number but maybe it's too much for it's too high for a machine learning system but uh, what uh, scare me about this is about um, that uh, maybe algorithm, algorithms lacks data. We still uh, we have a lot of things that we don't know about this uh, new disease. We basically like uh, still at school we learn day by day. I don't know if they tested in a field uh, or uh, in a lab because uh, there are a lot of difference. And uh, of course, this uh, as you know, this uh, this disease. Uh, seems like a normal pneumonia, so it can be really over overlapped with other disease and could be uh, a huge cases of false uh, positives. So I don't know, we should really care in putting this uh, artificial intelligence and giving, them, giving to artificial intelligence too much influence in a situation like that. Well, I also heard a lot about uh, radiologists that in the future could be uh, almost totally replaced by artificial intelligence. I think it's too soon because uh, we still need doctor and radiologists. At least uh, we will have very soon a bath uh, like uh, Star Wars that uh, we don't need any doctor, but uh, I don't think this is gonna happen soon. So artificial intelligence is a tool, it's a tool for doctor. But putting the putting it in the first line could be dangerous. So in Italy, for example, we use it like uh, um, side by side with human, 
so radiology, radiologists can be helped by algorithms and uh, algorithms are helped by radiologists. So um, they're, they're, any mistake made by tired doctor could be uh, avoided thanks to um, artificial intelligence and uh, vice versa. But um, so I think that using doctor and artificial intelligence side by side is a win-win scenario. So uh, I think we should use like that. And by the way, about uh, bias problem, there is also, I'm sorry, I give you a lot of uh, example, but I really like it because they are very helpful to understand the situation for uh, my personal view. And uh, basically, I um, like talk about this bias problem about this company in the United States, uh, it's called Optum. It's um, mm, an insurance company that used to um, de determine the, the risk of future healthcare needs uh, on people. But uh, this uh, algorithm, were, were, uh, after further further investigation, was really biased against uh, Afro-American people uh, for reasons not related to health, like uh, finances or socioeconomic status. And uh, for what we know and from what we understand during this epidemic, uh, Black American people is the ethnic group, group more, most weakened for inequality reason. And by the way, there is also this example um, that, that I took from a paper, a research paper from uh, Juan that they are during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, they use a machine learning uh, to predict the mortality risk, but there is also a problem because they could expose them to a myriad uh, and a lot of bias um, problems. Uh, for example, men in Wuhan are used to smoke a lot, so this could increase the risk, but uh, so overestimating the risk for men could also underestimate the risk of women. So I don't think this is good, because uh, underestimating uh, the risk for a gender could, at least, uh, could be a huge problem. Even if we discover that this uh, disease is uh, less dangerous for, for women, but we need to protect everybody. So uh, I think we'll be, we should be really careful about this. But of course, uh, we also, I don't know if you are in lockdown like me in Italy, uh, are really painful, uh, so they they limit our freedom, but uh, they help to flatten the curve in all of country. Yeah, they are very useful. So um, and now, um, country like me that uh, are, are thinking about uh, the phase two. We just in this week we are entered in uh, phase two, so we have start we have started to relax some measure and. But of course, we need uh, some time to create a, a cure for this disease. But uh, we have to get back to a sort of our normality. And uh, maybe technology could help us, uh, but it could be also a source of many new ethical problems that democratic country never faced before. So like, um, on the, so we are creating a lot of uh, new technology, but I don't know if they are really helpful. Uh, for example, there is uh, this application in uh, this app in uh, Bellevue, that is a city in the United States, that uh, they have a lot of know-how about the tracking system um, that they use to, you know, in a world of terror, uh, but they now struggling to contain virus. So um, to contrast that, uh, many local police department departments start to boat uh, up to track people. They they also use something about a very old fashioned app, like uh, in Bellevue, um, where uh, other people uh, could send a report about other people that uh, could uh, avoid um, some kind of lockdown. But uh, this could be very uh, wasteful of time and the resources. For a uh, for police department, but uh, also could be a really really dangerous for really dangerous for people because could create some kind of stigma on people 
because uh, maybe someone is um, just uh, get out the um, just went out their home to to grab some food and they could be stigmatized or um, like uh, they are infective infectious people so i don't know if this system is uh, is good to use um uh, let me just say something about uh, thermal scanner because there are a lot of say about that. Sometimes they are used uh, uh, with artificial intelligence to recognize people from the distance. But uh, there are also many examples of company that could um, exploit our fears in this disease, like uh, this alleged company uh, about um, that that created. Um, uh, software to then and they made a lot of great statement in the news circuit uh, about they this incredible software that they have that could catch a thousand people in hour with fever uh, but uh, I don't know uh, I don't know what that is means what what it means that they, ca they could catch 1,000 people in a hour I don't know but um, after some kind of uh, investigation, thanks to very good journalists, uh, they discovered that this remanage algorithm was used for uh, something different than track people uh, with thermal scanner. And uh, also ac accuracy radio was really bad because it could mi mislead around 14 degrees and uh, very different for what the company claimed that it was just about one degrees. But also, this is a problem about all thermal cameras because with the distance, the accuracy ratio decreases decrease a lot. So I give you a sort of uh, an exercise. Try at home, try in front of a thermal camera um, with uh, walking with uh, a cup of cup, uh, a hot cup of tea. And uh, let's see what, uh, which kind of temper temperature uh, the camera will show. And uh, of course, um, uh, American uh, Center for Disease and Control, I don't know if you heard about, is a very uh, trustable um, agency. Um, suggest to confirm the regular term um, temperature with um, Com sorry, try to um, confirm the temperature, suggest to um, confirm the temperature with a regular thermometer. So we have to be really careful about uh, this uh, this kind of uh, bad company that try to sell all this kind of stuff, stuff that uh, don't work in um, so, uh, and basically I think the thermal camera um i don't know if they are very feasible in this situation because uh, fever is just one uh, symptom of this um, disease maybe it's not for asymptomatic people they have a fever so it could be just palliatives uh, but maybe it could create a general sense of security uh, i think that uh, by the way uh, Panic is never good, so if uh, we would install one of them, it's good, but we have to be really careful because uh, I don't know if they are really trustable. But uh, what is fun is, uh, is that um, I started uh, to collaborating with uh, uh, IE software company that uh, remanage um, software to, to find uh, people that try to, to crowd in an empty space. We remanaged that this software that was created to, to check if rude people um, don't throw into the garbage the pet manure. So we remanaged to, to check if uh, people um, start to, to crowd in a empty space and uh, we know how it could be dangerous. So this um, uh, artificial software that uh, we try to create and sell to uh, local administration, local police station. But um, uh, this with um, my colleagues um, raised a lot of uh, concern because uh, in Italy we have a, a really powerful privacy um, 
concept. We really care about it. So, and for example, about the rule in Italy, we cannot record uh, inside the workplace. Uh, and uh, of course, we cannot replace or re uh, we cannot record people that work at workstation, but uh, for privacy reason, of course, but we can also, uh, we can do it in the public space, but uh, sincerely, I don't know if uh, employees, uh, employees are very good with it because it's a software that could be very invasive in our uh, life. I don't know. Um, I'm really some, some kind of worry about our future because uh, I don't want to seem to, to um, don't want to seem a conspirative guy, but also I don't want to live in a horror some kind of Orwellian society where there is a full staff surveillance um, uh, system around us. And uh, like we know, um, mm, never shaped our privacy concept like a Cambridge Analyz uh, Analytica example. And many companies before these cases think uh, thought about uh, privacy was dead, and we probably uh, we thought uh, that as well. But um, and after that, uh, many governments start to to create regulation to guarantee some kind of personal data protection. Uh, in Europe, we have this strong regulation, general data protection regulation that we call, uh, uh, for simplify, GDPR, uh, that gives the control of, uh, of data to the people. So we are in control of uh, the, da the data that we give to, to, to the companies. And we also, and uh, it, it also creates a soft kind of safeguard to, to, to protect it because uh, we have uh, the, the, the regulation established um, anon anonymization of data. So, and also it, it could be really hard for a company that tried not to follow the rule. Uh, I don't, they could be really, um, hard for them because if you don't follow you have to pay a lot of money to to local uh, to any um, agency of privacy that uh, every country in uh, europe have but in a normal context gdpr cannot allow use of data uh, like that for for a trusting app but uh, we also know that uh, trusting app will be really could be really helpful to, to fight and track the, the disease. But uh, thankfully, the European Commission gave uh, some advice to respect GDPR in this uh, kind of situation. So if uh, anonymization is, uh, will be active, uh, we, we can manage data to, to track people and uh, provide some, some kind of safeguard for, for them. But, um, of course, there are countries that uh, operated even well, like South Korea, that uh, almost uh, stopped the uh, coronavirus. And they are very, a techno very technological country. So, but they also have some kind of uh, regulation. Maybe in some part of uh, the regulation the, that it is even stronger of GDPR than GDPR. But uh, the approach of South Korea is very technological. Uh, they also learned from the lesson from uh, MERS, a uh, disease that uh, it, it um, eat very hard in uh, South Korea a few years ago. But they use all kinds of technology to fight the, the epidemic, uh, the epidemics. They're using, uh, for example, data to track people like bank account movement, movements, payments, cell phone uh, tracking application and uh, CCTV footage from a camera like um, or any kind of data that come from smart city like uh, Daegu. And, uh, and, and then Korean government feed all this data to an artificial intelligence that could uh, cross all this data and track people to target them and to and, and to to have a really clear clearer um, 
panorama of uh, the infected people in their country. So, uh, but I also think that uh, they pushed very close to the ethical limit of uh, data usage. But uh, I also say that it's really working because uh, they almost stopped the spread of the virus. But uh, I don't know if this is feasible in other countries because they have, uh, so it's a very technological way to fight this virus. virus. And they have uh, the population in South Korea, almost 97% of uh, population have access, have an access to internet and 95% own a smartphone. Maybe it's also called cultural expert, but uh, sincerely, I don't know if uh, this could be feasible in other country, especially in uh, Italy. And sorry to be, to seem a bit skeptical, but uh, I, I just look into the reality because of course, um, even us are creating some kind of tracing hub, but we are also rela relaxing some kind of measure for uh, this lockdown. But uh, we we know very little about uh, this contact contact tracing app uh, that could be really useful right now, but we are not using because there is no such a app. It's still in development. But uh, for what we know, uh, it doesn't use uh, GPS technology, so it can track uh, us uh, where we are. Uh, it will use uh, Bluetooth technology thanks to um, uh, uh, the um, Apple and Google uh, technology um, agreement about Bluetooth. So um, it, it creates some kind of uh, exadecimal code to um, to identify the contact. And uh, so I think it's pretty safe, but what uh, is not safe is, uh, and uh, I have a lot of questions about that, is about how this app can understand um, who is in fact, in, um, who, is, uh, who has this disease. So with uh, a central computer that could track all the infectious I don't know. There could be also many leaks about that. So it's a cybersecurity uh, problem. And uh, by the way, um, there have also been uh, many breach in uh, our system. There have also been uh, some kind of uh, with the Netherlands application. Uh, we had also um, a cybersecurity problem a few weeks ago in our providential department. So I don't know if uh, Italy will follow this uh, this this strategy. So, but uh, for what I'm sure is about that uh, the artificial intelligence, we Italian government decided to not establish any artificial intelligence to cross data like uh, South Korea, and uh, also. Maybe for um for um privacy policy, I respect it. Like I respect uh, that it's not mandatory, but I also know that it could be a really huge limit. Um, but uh, maybe the main problem of uh, this strategy is that uh, whole people that uh, is also the more weak um, uh, people in uh, this emergency don't use smartphone. For example, my grandmother. Uh, doesn't have one. Uh, so in Italy, just 66% of uh, people have a, a smartphone. Um, and also during uh, uh, the last week, there, there also been this, come out this, this survey about uh, this, this app and uh, it came out that uh, only 46% of people would download this app the 31 said no, and the 20, 23 said, I don't know. So, and uh, for be, to be really useful this app, it must be downloaded by at least 60 or 70% of population. So I really don't know if uh, it's gonna work. I really hope so because we really need it. But uh, for what I know, for what uh, I understand right now, the general situation, liberal and democratic society are uh, at uh, crossroad. 
uh, they have to prefer freedom or security. I hope they are very wise and they can choose both of them. But uh, so if uh, we must follow this strategy about uh, the application and, uh, and the artificial intelligence that cross data, government must be really transparent about this app and they also have to encourage people. I think there is at least three steps that a government could take uh, to, to encourage people. And uh, the first one for me is uh, avoid, avoiding black box software. Uh, the second one is uh, telling to the people how these data are used for. Um, and the third one, when the, all this uh, epidemic will end, uh, send an, um, a notification to people to, to ask to ask them if they want to delete the app and the data collected during this uh, epidemics. So uh, I'm very close to I'm I almost finished. So I know this uh, my uh, my speech seems a little bit skeptic, but uh, I'm not skeptic about uh, artificial intelligence. I think it's really our future about uh, application of artificial intelligence are really bright. Uh, I think also about medical stuff, like uh, finding some some kind of malignancy of tissue abnormalities or some kind of uh, damage in a skeletal structure or even to reduce uh, some kind of invasive biopsies. Um, or think about uh, how the how artificial intelligence could uh, summarize uh, many research paper, or even uh, maybe this is the best uh, field uh, to use it, like uh, finding new drugs or finding a new cure or helping to to get very very soon a new vaccine to to fight this virus. But uh, right now, I also think that. Uh, for, um, it's too soon to use, uh, to use um, artificial to have an artificial intelligence that could have a really meaningful impact. Right now, we need uh, still a lot of data for uh, epidemics, we, um, and we also be really aware about the limit because there are a lot of people that uh, really, really concern, and they ask uh, for, uh, as I said, a lot, a lot of. Um, they have a lot of hype about the new technological way to fight this virus. So we have to be really careful about uh, giving some information that uh, are wrong. But uh, after all, I think artificial intel intelligence is just a tool and uh, it's all up on uh, people to, to have uh, a good solution. Like uh, any tool could uh, hurt us and could uh, also have a lot of benefit. I think that uh, the future could could give us a really we could have a really bright future about uh, I so thank you uh, I'm finished my my speech uh, I think so thank you it was a great speech and now we will take some questions okay yeah so first question that you have is that the studies carried out on the diagnosis of COVID-19 and X-ray with transfer learning methods provide with very high accuracy rates. What do you think about this article or solutions? Well, um, like I said, I think it's um, a win-win scenario using doctor and uh, artificial intelligence uh, like machine learning software to to help us and uh, having 100% uh, uh, accuracy. I'm not uh, I'm not a developer, but uh, I know that there could be also a great limit. So we will see. I hope uh, uh, I still hope for a bright future in uh, this field. All right. Okay. So your next question is artificial intelligence and Chinese virus connection social credit system, artificial intelligence state model, how will technology change sociology? Oh, well, I'm not a sociologist, but uh, well, um, I don't know. It's very, 
uh, it's working like uh, they created some kind of lockdown with technology tools in uh, Ubay. But uh, in my opinion, it's also scary because uh, China has a um, different kind of uh, way to use this, these tools. Uh, they try to track people for having a good behavior, uh, and even without the pandemic. And uh, liberal society, I don't think they are really care about uh, some kind of scoring uh, or something like that. So I don't know. Uh, it's all about us uh, and how we will manage it. So. All right. Okay, so another question. The virus has to collect data, so everyone has to give their data. How will ordinary citizens protect their sensitive data against states? Can our data be hacked? Oh, well, first of all, I think a good password is really useful. So don't use uh, as a password the password. But uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I think we have... Um, we should be really aware about uh, about how we use all kind of software. Um, we have to be um, we have to be really educated. Yeah, I don't know what to say, but um, we should be really aware about uh, how about the term and condition of softwares. And uh, for example. Uh, I don't know, there was that kind of software about uh, face up, I think, that was really careful because they 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 were not very liability. There was some kind of uh, liability about uh, how they use data. So we must be really careful and I uh, think at least uh, twice when we download some kind of password or when we give our data. All right, so we have one more. Which party parties will be responsible if AI machine learning algorithms are problematic, cause to make wrong decisions and affecting people's health and life? And he thinks it's a bit of a strange question. Well, let me get see what you mean. Uh, well, uh, as I said, I'm not a developer, so uh and probably i'm not the the, the, good, the good person to to ask this kind of question so maybe you should uh wait some some kind of expert about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning software all right i also have a question for you so i was wondering what do you think italy's prospect would be like like prospects in the future from an economic perspective considering that italy was one of the hardest hit countries in the world by the pandemic how do you think the economic outlook would change in the near future oh well i think <laughs> that the near future is going to be really bad because our mm -hmm. gdp is uh, just plummeted this first quarter about uh, i don't remember if 9 or 14% but maybe wow. it's the hugest that uh, we ever had mm -hmm. i hope uh, it uh, it will be a sort of kind of v so uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, probably this uh, kind of disease will uh, impact very um, for a long term, for a very long time. Uh, I hope uh, it's, it's going to be end very soon. But uh, to do that, we must wait for a vaccine. I think the, this is the only way. Maybe um, the the situation will be um, a bit uh, relaxed uh, during this summer, but uh, we still don't know. I, I'm not an epidemiologist. Uh, what uh, what um, or what can I say? Uh, I can say that uh, we still. I hope for uh, a, bright, a bright future. Maybe not this this year, but maybe the 2021 will be an amazing year. Awesome. I hope so. Hopefully. So thank you so much. It was a great talk. It was really informative. So thank you for your time and thank you for being with us. It's, all, it's been uh, fun and uh, it's also been very... Uh, thank you. Thank you. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed this webinar and stay 
tuned for next week. We have another webinar coming up. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.